I think we're I think we're working now. Hopefully, we had to do a little bit of a I reset. Think we're rolling. We, we got locked up at one point, so I think we're rolling good. This is um, we're in the zone now. Let's get this Charlie Hunter track going. This is from our record, Baboon, Baboon Strength. Strength. Yeah, I've from, had, I bought this record. It's a, it's a cool one. Day, I'm proud man, of it. it Thanks for out. buying it. It's, uh, yeah. it's from 2009, and it uh, features Charlie and myself and Tony Mason. That's awesome. We recorded it at Trout Studios in Brooklyn, and um, this song is called Astronaut Love Triangle, and it's about that story when the astronaut found out about it, her astronaut partner was having an affair with another astronaut. Uh-huh. She got in her car in Boston, and put on an adult diaper and drove straight to Florida, took a bunch of speed and drove straight to Florida. Do you remember this story? No. And was arrested along the way. Let's get the soundtrack while we're... Let's check it out. Here we go. I, I love, by the way, I love some of his... Um, Title. He's like like uh, when when the whole... Um, you know, after September 11th and the whole uh, backlash with the French and we had Freedom, Freedom Fries. Yeah, sure, sure. He's got a track called Freedom Tickler. Like the French Tickler. <laughs> I mean, Charlie has Charlie that has great. Amazing. He has great uh, song titles, no doubt. How's the How's the balance, guys? Can you hear the uh, the talking and the music kind of equal? Check. Hello, feedback people. It's hard for me to tell on these headphones too. These headphones are like the kind. We have no these idea. like fifteen dollar airport headphones where we have no idea what's going on. Well, it's it's like my um. My voice is so loud in my head. Actually, you should talk. Hey guys, can you hear me? There we, yeah, I need to turn it on. There we go. <laughs> Say something. Hi. There we go. That might be good. Boom. All right. So yeah, this is some Charlie Hunter stuff. But I think this record is a nice record. It's, yeah. uh, it's got a lot of cool songs, a lot of... A lot of nice beats by Tony. This might help too. We'll just put this right in the middle. There we go. Pretty good. Thanks, Mom. Crushing it, Mom. <laughs> ah, so, um, and you guys are busy this summer, Railroad, just like Sam, and we're all, we're all doing a million festivals, yeah. right? Well, um, we're doing a, uh, we've been a little chill because we're supposed to be making a new record. The mm-hmm. schedule keeps changing. Oh, but. right. Where do you record that? In New Jersey? We're trying to figure that out. Oh, yeah. okay. We, we were going to do it in New Orleans, and then we had to change plans a little. And, oh, wow. And Anders Osborne was going to produce, and he's he's got a little bit of a, I think he's got to get his back worked on or something. Oh. So, kind of put him out of commission. So. Sure. We're, we're, we're juggling it. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make it happen. Cool, but, man. Um, yeah. But I'm looking forward to hearing the, um, I haven't had a chance to hear this thing. Oh, you have? So, yeah, I'm looking forward okay, to it. Okay, well, like, well, that's coming up next. This, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do that next. Um, For everyone that's, that, that didn't hear, we're listening to um, uh, a Charlie Hunter record that uh, Eric played on. I was a big Charlie Hunter fan. High school on, like, past college. Huge yeah, I think college. we all were. He was amazing. He was so unique and, and so successful in that era, you know, when everything kind of exploded. It's like, I was into to, uh, Grateful Dead music and things like that in high school, and then... MMW came out and Charlie Hunter came out right around then, right. a little before them, but came onto my radar around a similar time, you know. And it was just exciting, all yeah. this music these guys were making. Yeah. So that was. So you were a Grateful Dead guy. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and in uh, in, uh, in Maryland, you know, in DC, growing up, yeah. like I, I knew about the Dead, but I wasn't really sure if I, I didn't know much about them. But then right. someone took me to the concert in 1993 at RFK Stadium. And I, I was sold. I loved it. And from there for the next few years, it's awesome. a lot of dead. Yeah. Because your current influences on your like solo stuff don't necessarily. Yeah, you know, pro- probably not. I mean, yeah. I, but I think that like that just the whole, you know, the the improvised music right. window opened for me because of the Grateful yeah. Dead. Well, know? it's the same. For, I mean, my my thing was pretty similar because, but it was I was a little young for the Dead. I mean, I listened to them in middle school, but. Mm-hmm. I was too young to really get it. And Jerry died when I was in eighth grade. Yeah. So I, I never got to see them. I, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, didn't play North Florida a whole lot. Yeah. Um, right. But Fish was, I got into that. Are you from Tallahassee? No, I went to Florida State. But right. I, was, I grew up in Fernandina Beach, Jacksonville. Oh, Jacksonville. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, it was, but, but it was the same thing. You kind of like, if you want to make improvised music yourself, kind of have to grow out of it a little bit to mm-hmm. like taste the yeah. rainbow of improvisation with the jazz and everything else right yeah otherwise you know it's like 
when I was 18, I was like, this is pretty unhealthy to listen to just one band. Yeah, it's a little weird. And, At all, but, if that's like I'm going to be a musician. It, it, it's, it is a massive catalog, this Grateful Dead, you know, and I actually, um, I revisited it this month, the last couple months, because I was filled in for Marco right. an event over J-Rat. Right. So I was digging in and I learned, you know, I was learning about 50 year songs or so for this weekend and it's just reminded me how massive and extensive the catalog yeah. is. And so it makes sense that you can get into that one band, but yeah, yeah. what it did for well, me... Fish was the same way from, from my yeah, generation. Sure. It was like, there was so much material, but I just, <laughs> I can't listen to... What it did for me was though, it opened the door to, um, to uh, be more passionate about jazz music. Yeah. Because I was already playing jazz and doing gigs in like early in high school, yeah. since eighth grade really. Right. But I didn't really, I wasn't that passionate. Yeah, so yeah. when the, I got into the Grateful Dead and it opened, kind of opened my senses about improvisation and like jam, you know, yeah. and got me smoking weed, you know, like. <laughs> What's that, the next track? Right. That really, that really opened things. We're going to go into the Salmon record now. Yeah, yeah, Sound yeah. good? Yeah, yeah. Let's do a few of these because I really want to. Yeah, let's check them out. So, um, Give me your favorites. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think Southern, let's, well, you know, let's let's start off with Greg Garrison's song, Analog. Okay. I think this is a great song. Let's hit that. That's cool. So, uh, he, now, he wrote this and he's singing this? Yep. Okay, cool. And do you, did any of yours, anything you do get? No, I don't have any, well, I, I co-wrote one with Drew, or like, you know, I, I did some writing with one. Um, you can listen to that one too, but uh, other, I, didn't, I don't have any of just my tunes on here. Um, but how long, how long have you been with them? Yeah, I've been with the band only uh, two and a half years. So last year we made the record one year and change. Yeah, so maybe sense. yeah, might take a minute. No, nothing, you know. Yeah, but you know what? I did. I think I contributed a lot of musical input to this record. Yeah. And actually, uh, I suggested the studio. Oh yeah, Where did, and you guys went Tucson. Okay. To Wave Lab Studios. I've been there a couple times and uh, suggested it, and the guys went with that, and that was I mean, in itself was great. Yeah, Korea, you know, thing, and I'm glad they, I'm glad they heeded my advice on that one. Steve Berlin produced the record from Los Lobos. That's great. Yeah. How did you like working with him? I love that guy. He's great. Have you ever worked with him? Not yet. He's great. Yeah. Great guy to work with. Cool guy, open-minded guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I think he produced the last Green Sky record too. I think he did too. Yeah. yeah. And he's just, uh, he's he produces a lot of records and. Um, He's just fun to work with. Uh, he was great with my keyboards. He great ideas. Yeah. He doesn't. He thinks outside the box in a cool way. You know? so. I just heard something about don't text me. Face. <laughs> I love. It's like so weird. Like grow. You know. Hearing. I think I've probably made modern digital references at some point myself too. Right. It's so funny hearing that in songs. It used to be like song lyrics were like talking about picking up the phone or sending a letter. You know, I grew up with like, hey, Mr. Postman. Right. You know? sure. <laughs> Love hey, Mr. Postman. You know, now it's like, what's the modern equivalent of like, hey, Mr. Postman? You know, it's like, well, this song, you know, this is, um, Call Me Maybe. This song is, uh, is, uh, don't give me no, no digital, give me that analog. So yeah. it's kind of about all the, like, yeah. you know, want, want that old school. Right. Uh, <laughs> hey, yeah. Mr. Postman. Now it's like, text me. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll all turn around again. I mean, I, yeah. sometimes I kind of like... Like I, vinyl. Yeah. I mean, but sometimes I just kind of wonder just what if the internet just blew yeah. up, you know, and like we just had to revert. Like, that would... It might be cool... The traffic would just come to a stop. I, I <laughs> no had, one would know where they're going. I had a little reality check this week. I left my phone at the String Summit, or near the String Summit, in an Uber, and had to get on the red eye without it on Sunday night. So I got home and I didn't have my phone for three days and Did I had to get it back. Yeah, I just got it back yesterday. But I left my dude. The string summit. I went. I left my hard drive in the lift on the way to the airport. You did? Yeah. yeah. I got it back. Yeah. yeah, I got it back. But using it right now. It, it wasn't that easy. And um, I, John Gray. Hey, what's up, John yeah. Gray? He was on. He 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 chimed in on our Kevin one, and I think he showed up. For, he's he's a he's a recurring character. This guy. Yeah, yeah. He's out there. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> Well, I did get a haircut actually. It was longer. I, I let it, you know, it's, it looks bushy now, and I'm representing the uh, Aiken Bluegrass Festival. Did y'all play at that? No, yeah. That's a good one. South Carolina. It was a killer lineup. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, 
But you know, back to the phone thing. I, I had to drive to Long Island on Tuesday morning to pick up some road cases that I ordered, and like, I literally was like stopping at gas stations asking for directions, oh, and, like four oh, times. I remember that. I was really lost, and it, 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 it hurt. You know, it hurt to not have that. Like, I'd love to see a plot of like gas station profits when right. smartphones got pop, like after a post 2009. Oh, yeah. Like right. no one is stopping in anymore to ask for directions. Yeah, yeah. And now totally. they're also like, oh, I need a water too. Or like, uh, yeah, give, give, me, give me a pack of gum. Give me yeah, this. Yeah, no, it's like. Okay, let's uh, let's get to another track here. How about uh, places? This is the one I co-wrote with uh, Drew. Oh, great, great. The right, analog one sounds familiar. I think I've heard that live actually. It's catchy, you know. Yeah. Garrison's got a, you know, he's got a, he's got a sharp pen, you know, yeah. like he knows how to write a hit. <laughs> I like that one. Cool, we're getting, we're getting a little crowd. Feel free to ask any questions or snarky comments or like whatever, you know? Oh yeah, we're blowing up here. Hey, is that that's Leah says she liked, she saw me in Telluride with J-Rat, thanks. California yeah, that was fun, man. Yeah. J so where did you guys play with the J-Rat run? You? We played uh, in t Grand Targhee, and then we played in uh, Salt Lake City at the depot, and then we played at Telluride at the Ride Fest. Cool, Targhee's always great. Rob Katz is wondering if I went to the Bayou a lot. Dude, I did. I used to go every Monday night to see The Next Step. That's a Grateful Dead cover band. Wow. So, um, like... Does that place still exist? The Bayou does not exist. Um, it closed about 15 years ago, but there's... Gypsy Sally's is down there oh, yeah. now. It's, I actually like that job. It's not the same room, but it's yeah. right on the same block, kind of. Um, Let's see if everything's working because he's paying real quick. Yeah, dialed up. I've done, in fact, speaking of Gypsy Sally's, I played, um, I played there in the neighborhood orchestra with Drew. Okay. Yeah, love his, love his singing. Love everything he does, but he's, 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 got, a, he's got a great voice too. Oh yeah. Probably shouldn't do this, probably just gonna slow down. Yeah. just forget this. Yeah, forget that. Let's just, let's just rock. Just listen in the moment. Eric, do I pick anything? Nah, I'm not a good picker. I mean, I'm okay. Like, I can play a little guitar and, and bass, and I pick my melodica. <clears throat> pick my melodica. <laughs> melodica picking at the campsite. Yeah, yeah. When do you, do you have get it. down, you get in there and shred some bluegrass melodica? A little bit, yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, that's awesome. I try. Yeah. yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea. Where I is think, that? Pennsylvania? Yeah. Um, right. I think we may have even. I think we may have even tossed that idea around at one point, but this what happens is every Thanksgiving is. So the band has been doing this for like 10 years. Right. Because everyone right? lives in the area. Oh, okay. So it's like a Thanksgiving, like we're there and you know, right. let's do this. Uh, it's fun. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool show we do every year. But to, to make it different every year, we always talk about having guests, and, and we've had guests, but it's really hard because no one wants to. Musicians don't want to travel. <laughs> For I mean, Thanksgiving? Yeah, I mean, no one, you'd have to fly on Thanksgiving very early on Friday. Right. Shows are Friday, Saturday. Right. So it's like, you know what I mean? Same yeah, for like I if mean, you were going to get Drew and I mean, you and all of them live here, but to get Drew and well, Vince to come out, it's like, they you know, people do the family thing. Well, the problem is, is that Salmon does the same thing, though. We play in Colorado every Thanksgiving, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. So, okay. they, there I you mean, go. as far as I. Question answered. As far as I can tell, they've been doing that forever. We did. The Fillmore two years ago, we did the Boulder Theater last year. This year, we're doing the Gothic Theater in yeah. Denver. So, this is a good question. Um, Kyle is a keyboard player. Oh, okay, lives in Portland. What's up, uh, dude? Big fan of the band. I'm sure fan of Salmon too. Uh, he wants to know about your rig. The rig that I currently am rocking is the, it's taken this long to dial it in. It took two and a half years to figure it out. But what we've got is we've got a a whirly. 200A, sta a stage Wurlitzer electric piano. We have a clavinet E7, I believe it's an E. And uh, we have my Yamaha YC30 combo organ. And I have a- How does that relate to like Hammond? Uh, similar or way different? Uh, similar, it's, it's a combo organ, so they sound different, like, you know, Cheesy organs, you Do know, you from use the it 70s. A B3 or in lieu of? In lieu of. Yeah, it's it's a little, it's more psychedelic, okay. you know, for a simple answer. You can get some kind of B3 tones out of it. 
it's not like a Farfisa organ, it's like hard to get anything that sounds like a V3, it's like almost all kind of the cheesy combo organ yeah, thing. Yeah. The Yamahas can do that and a little bit more like a V3, a little more roots here. Yeah. But I do have a Leslie speaker for that. Okay. And I have a, a really cool, uh-oh. You we'll get there, finish your oh. Please come back. Please return. That's so annoying. We got 20 minutes out of that one, huh? Yeah. I mean, this is what's weird is we still get comments, but can you guys see us or hear us? Our screen's frozen up here. Bollocks. There's a title track from the album. You can probably pause it. I think, I think so? We're gonna have, you can pause it. I think we're going to have to... Time to restart. Let's just yeah. do it, right? See. I know, dude, I just saw it. It's gonna get me started. Play. Okay. Nice work, boss. Yeah, we gotta wait for our crowd to come back. <laughs> Where are the people? We're all alone now? Went down to the water. We're all alone. Watch those seabirds fly. Heard the voices all the way. Yeah. I'm singing to the bell blue sky. This is another Drew song. Yeah. Vince and Drew together. It's a little more Drew than Vince in terms of the writing. There he is. As I was going to say, I want to hear a Vince too. Yeah. There we go. We're back. Sorry, we had to keep resetting. There's... What's up, Matt? Dude, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Not all alone, he says. Eric, man. What's up? The cucumber water game is strong. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> you seemed a little hesitant when I offered. I didn't want like you to go too to much. the trouble, man. You thought it was too much. Well, you know, with the, with the bubbly water, like the cucumbers or the lemon or, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to put in there, maybe some fresh herbs, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a big difference. <laughs> Lime, of course. Tequila. Oh. <laughs> Favorite moments from Northwest String Summit? Um, man. Uh, you go, well, I, I'm gonna give this another share. Here. Favorite moments from the String Summit? I mean, it's just all so great there. I, I mean, I, I uh, you know what, you know what was amazing was the, the all female band late night. Side boob. Side boob. Oh, they yeah, were I got to see awesome. it. We had to get up so early. That was late. It was that was really good. That was really yeah. nice to have that going on at the festival. All those, all those really badass ladies. Up there, playing, you know, playing good songs. Yeah, I heard some like Jody Watt. All right, hopefully we don't have any more interruptions. Sorry, we, we keep getting hung up for some reason or another. I'm trying, trying our best. digging this though. Cool, it's right? Great. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, you know, when you have when you got a great rhythm section like All Win and, yeah. and Craig and Yeah. We got to play together at um Great South Bay Festival. Oh yeah. Uh, Always got this two, two weeks ago, yeah. Fandy Falco. It's, it's good. It's good show. I think I did that festival with James Maddock. You know that guy? I think I did that with him a few years ago. Like on the water there a little right? Yeah. 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 Cool. It's a cool spot. Yeah. Totally. Every time I played it, there's just been hotter in hell. Oh, like... yeah, super hot. I think when I did it with James, it was like actually early in the day, like maybe like 11 or 1 or something. So it was like. Maybe. No, actually, that would be hotter. I don't know. It, yeah. I don't know. It was, I think it wasn't too bad when we went somehow. Like, it was, it was like overcast. So, so fill, in, fill in any blanks for me in case I miss anything. So you've done the Charlie Hunter thing. Yep. Awesome. Salmon. Uh, J Rad. 
a big yes and a small no. Sure. Uh, your own stuff, of course. Sure. Uh, are there other? Yeah, I played with Nora Jones, really? Roseanne Cash, wow. Shooter Jennings for a long time. We made two awesome. albums. See, I didn't know this. Citizen Cope for right, four or five years. Right, right. Uh, Philip Phillips, okay. the uh, guy who won American Idol. We, you know, we, that was a big old tour. Uh, Devochka, the rock band from Colorado. Okay. I, I uh, played with Fat them. Mama. Yeah, my old band, Fat <laughs> Mama. The Motet, I toured with the Motet a little bit. Cool. Um, Alice Smith. That one, I don't know. She's a great singer. Um, and then a lot, a, a, a lot. Oh, here's a great, here's the great Vince song from the album. Let's check this okay, out. This cool. is Southern Belle. Okay. Um, and then just a lot of jazz music here in New York. So yeah. for the jazz heads, you know, Stephen Bernstein, yeah. Theo Bleckman, Ellery Escalin, Allison Miller, Ben Allison, ben. Todd Sikafus, um, Jenny Scheinman. Great. Lots of, you know, lots of folks. Yeah. So, oh, Nels Klein, right. Scott Amendola, Juan Miles, you know. Yeah. So I, I had, I've been fortunate to kind of get a chance to collaborate with a lot of my peers and, you know, people that I, you know, idolized before yeah. I met them, maybe or knew about them before yeah. I met them. That's great. a fan of their music. So, yeah, yeah New, York's, the, uh, New York's great for that, you know. Went to the Blue Note for the first time. Living here. I've been to Smalls and the Vanguard and all that stuff, but uh, saw Cassandra Wilson. Oh, this is one of my friends from high school, John Davis. He plays drums. Do you ever play? Do you ever play with him? I don't know him. Does he live here? Yeah, he's in New York. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I know. I met him, but John Coward, my friend, plays piano in that band. Yeah, yeah. He's he great. was on the yeah. He's excellent. Yeah, John plays drums with them. Cool. So, yeah. how, how we went to high school together. How do they sound? It was great. Sandra's fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Sound was really good too. They have their, they have their own sound guy, but well, the sound guy is just... Yeah, it's a weird room, but like I think it can sound yeah, really good. It's really, it's really, you're right on the stage, you know. Yeah, he sounded great on piano too. Yeah, he, John Howard's great. Yeah, I love that guy. He's in the Brian Blade Fellowship band, yeah. you know. That, yeah, I have. He's I have a founding member of that band, yeah. and and uh, you know for that they've worked with John Mitchell and right. he's John's. That's awesome. I actually used to fill in for him with Rosen Cash. Cause was, like, what a like decision to have to make. If, like, Cassandra calls you and like, hey, we're doing this date. And Brian Blade says, can you do this date? <laughs> yeah, you know, you go with the one who calls you first usually, yeah. right? But, it, you know, if, if it's a band... I'm just saying, I'm sure they're, you, it's like a tough... Yeah. That's a good problem to have, is what I'm saying. That's a great you know, problem like, to have, man. <laughs> it's a great problem. You know, like, what's what's tough, though, is that sometimes you, ha you, know, you have to kind of turn something down like I remember I had I had like three dates with Theo Blackman in Europe and he Theo's this amazing vocalist and he has great Europe he's from Germany he's great Europe shows and then Citizen Cope called me for the three month tour yeah and I was just like Theo you know I gotta I gotta bail like it's three months you know like what am I supposed to do you know that's like yeah. so tough decisions come with those kind of problems they're, they're nice problems to have but at the same time you know it, it is. It's. Uh, it, it's always. It's never fun to have to back out of something or side against two things that you Right. So since we've run down some of the, the resume, what what would you say are some of the highlights? Maybe you've enjoyed some things for different reasons or whatever. Yeah, I mean. We'll we'll, we'll spare everyone the five point conversation we had earlier. Yeah, we don't need the five points, yeah. but 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 no, obviously like Charlie Hunter was a was a highlight. Three right. years with him. Right. And uh, it, it was my first uh, big gig in New York, you know, which was really special. And, and uh, we basically lived in Europe for about 14 months. Not lived, but we like only played Europe for about 14 months. And that, that the, the chance to play, like we played in Moscow and Kiev. And one time we did a week in Athens, Greece. Eight nights at the same club. That's uh, we what they miss about. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I love. I actually love traveling. I love being on the road. Uh huh. And, you know, I love the following that we have here in the States, but I miss the fact that we can't, like, yeah, we can't really go to Europe and make it work. Man, Bluegrass yeah. has got to go international, man. How do we do this? I mean, the Greece I, guy's in Japan right now. Yeah, they're doing a festival. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I played Japan with the Code Talkers. I was in the Code Talkers oh, before. Oh, uh, Bruce. Yeah. Oh. It was after Bruce was out of it, but. Bobby Lee? Yeah. Love that guy. And, um, we, yeah, we played, we did, we did a couple nights in Japan. Um, I played in Tokyo at the, um, at the uh, Cotton Club with Charlie Hunter for a week. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And I did. I got to go to the Mediterranean for like a month and a half, I think. And I was for my very early money-saving ventures was playing Look bass on you. the cruise ship, doing the cruise ship game. Yeah. But I got to go to Europe doing. But since then, it's been like, you know, 
It's a bit of a bummer, but this you, got, you got a question. Here. Oh yeah, and I just wanted to say first, this is Alwyn's song, Foreign Fields, on the record. So Alwyn Robinson, our drummer, singing here. It's a beautiful song. Oh, best. What do we got? The process of getting picked up by Sam. And well, you know what? I lived in Colorado for you know in Boulder for ten years, so I was on the scene and. I knew Vince and Drew a uh, little bit, you know, and uh, we came across each other fairly often. And Greg Garrison is my old pal. We played a lot of music together. So when, when, um, uh, when they needed a keyboard player, Bill Payne moved on to the Doobies. Greg, Greg asked me if I wanted to join. Also, our manager John Joy. We've been friends for 20 years, so cool. it made sense. And I and I I came and I just did the Stanley in a couple weeks. That's all I was signed on to do, and then. Ask me to stick it out. That's great. Here we are. Well, I think it's, I mean, actually, I think it's a great, I've seen them with a few different keyboard players, but I think it's, and obviously, I mean, you can't compare it to Bill Pink's, it's a different thing. It's such a different style. Yeah. That was great too, but like, I think it was definitely, they were doing that like featuring, and it definitely was that. It was like Sam and he was like a big part, right. of, but sort of separate. And where now that I've seen you guys, with the way you and Alwyn and Greg are together, mm -hmm. it's getting a little bit more of a unit feel, which is cool. Yeah, I, th I think it feels like a band now. Yeah, sure. and I give actually Vincent and Drew a lot of credit for letting you guys, like, absolutely featuring you guys as a unit too, like where they let you guys have that moment in the show. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, well, it's really cool. Not only that, but just like their open-mindedness in general about their bands. Most band leaders or artists, you know, are, are pretty precious and protective of their bands. Yeah. And when they're changing members, they're not really looking for a new member to change up the music yeah. style or like sound that you know much. And that's exactly what Vince and Drew are I know, cool with, great. you know. And so, Railroad was, I was lucky that Railroad did do the same towards me. Like when I first joined the band, you know, it was, they auditioned me on Upright Bass. And, you know, I play both instruments equally. That's always been like my thing. And listen to you, very talented. <laughs> well, I mean, it was just like, you, you can't, you should, you really should, I mean, if you want to be versatile, you, right. you have to, you can't be yeah. like, I mean, early on, it was one of those guys where it's like, oh yeah, I, sure, I play electric too, no. Yeah, you, yeah. It's a discipline, just yeah, like. Yeah, it's a, diff it's a different it's thing. It's different, you, you gotta shed it, so I do. Yeah, and but, these, these days, I mean, I think it's, uh, yeah, there's guys that just do one or the other, yeah. you know, there's a lot of guys. But, but they but, also want to do a very specific thing. Yeah, sure. Whereas I was like more open to like, I just wanted to. You know, I, I just love playing live music. Mm -hmm. You know, there's definitely some genres like more than others, but I, I wanted to keep my options open because I wanted to play with people I liked, and it was, you know what I mean. You know, I wasn't, I was younger, wasn't super picky. I just wanted to. So I really made the effort to make. So, but the point is, th those guys, much like Sam and Railroad, they were like, I was like, well, if I would have been here from the beginning, I would have played these songs on electric in the mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. And I was like. And we rehearsed, and I was like, if you, but I mean, if you don't want it, it's cool, but maybe let's try it and see if you like it. And they were open to it. They're like, oh, cool, let's check it out. And they liked it. So we that's, had, that's nice, you know? It makes instead of being like, no, we're an upright band. It's just nice to join a band and have feel like that your musical input and your tastes are actually yeah. encouraged and welcomed, you yeah. know? Because I've been in bands where you show oh, up hard. and they just like tell you what to yeah. do, and like, you know, right away it's like your personality is clear that that doesn't matter. And that's not that great. Yeah. So Leah, I see your I see your question. Uh, sorry to get it last time. We got we got shut off. Uh, I actually have not signed the tunnel. I've seen all the signings, but I have not signed. Wake uh, up from this dead and stay. Do I want to? Sure. You gotta sign the tunnel, dude. Yeah. Sure. I've never done it. I can't click on your Facebook link right now, but I don't want this. I'm like scared to touch the computer. I don't want it to like lock up on me again. Um, hey, I think it's time to play my new single, right? Let's do it, yeah. Yes. The one that you just shared the video for. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, fade this track out. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, um, I got my new record coming out um, September. Mm -hmm. September 14th on Low High Records, which is a cool connection because Tim yeah. Carbone is a part of that and mm -hmm. this is another way that we're connected. And, um, John what's it, John? this guy, this guy's a hoot in the comments section. He's every a legend. Time. He is an absolute legend. Look, okay, let's, I've, I've got to meet you sometime, John. You I've never met him? I, no. You I, know, he's the trumpet player from yeah. Fat, Fat Mama. You, well, yeah. not, I didn't know about Fat Mama, but I know he played on the big yes. Yeah, Fat Mama. This is, this is my guy. You know, yeah. we've been, you know, we've been doing this, this kind of shenanigans since 1995. Yeah. 
Do we hear anything? Oh, here we go. So, guys, this is the single, the title track for my new record. Uh, Falling Flowers features my wife, Victoria, yeah. and we just released the video this week, so you check out the video on YouTube. It's, here we I go. I saw the Instagram earlier. It's cool. It's cool check. Here we go. I'm going to grab, I'm going to show you all something. I'm going to grab it right back. Yeah, let's do here this. Here you get a sneak peek at the, yeah. uh, at the album. That's what this is for. Oh, dude. I love this. That's me swimming in a pool in Mexico on my wedding day. How about that? That Not is bad, shit. That's the real deal right there. Yeah. This is a great cover. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I, I like artwork in general. Shirtless men, you know what I mean? I, yeah, sure, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You combine the two, it's perfect. <laughs> but, you know, like... <laughs> um, my buddy Matt Welsh, uh, Kill Disco Design, he did the cover. Cool. Um, the so, tell me about the video. Man, the video, um, what happened was... Uh, Vince uh, hit me to this guy, Josh Clark, who lives in Ashland, a friend of his, plays in Tea Leaf Green, longtime member oh, yeah. of that band. Yeah, guitar player. Josh Clark, yeah. yeah okay. So uh, Vince hit me to his video work, and I checked it out, and he had done a video for Reed Mathis's Beethoven record. Yeah. Which I one time played, the Beethoven gave me then. Right. So I knew that. I knew Were that you on music. the Beethoven record? No, but I did the Beethoven Festival in Chicago with him one time, probably about 2010 or something, 2009. And um, and uh, Josh made a great record for uh, a great video for that for that record, and I checked it out and I mean it's great. And I contacted him like maybe last November, October, something like that, and asked him if he'd do it, and he said sure. That's awesome. And it looks great. It's, it's a cool video. Out. It's it's like very sweet, very fun, and I didn't I hardly gave him any direction, and I. I think I'm correct in saying that I don't think we've ever even spoken on the phone. We've never talked. I just like I gave him a couple, a couple. Um, it's awesome when that works out because there's, oh. there's so it's, it's a hard thing like artist to artist uh -huh. sometimes. There's been times I've done that with other musicians where you're like, oh, just just do your thing, you know. Right. And sometimes it works out like that where it's like it's just perfect. And other times where it's like, oh, I don't know if I can use that. Yeah, I, I'm a, I mean, I'm a big believer in collaboration. I really, yeah. I really appreciate it you know like i don't i don't like to tell people yeah, what that to do dictatorial that thing yeah i mean i just i i learned from some good band leaders like ron miles i remember when i was when i was younger playing with him and i just remember asking him i said hey ron what should i do here and he said well i hired you yeah because like, i want to hear I, what you, I would have made the video myself <laughs> yeah he was just like i want to hear what you yeah. want to play you know and that's like a simple lesson it's just like oh yeah that's the whole point so i really believe in that and with the video thing it's like i don't know anything about animation like i know some things about stories but i don't really claim i don't really think i know that much about what a good video is in this modern era i've watched a lot of videos yeah. i see what's popular you know i've watched the childish gambino video but yeah. i try to stay up on it yeah. but there, it's such a wide ranging genre you know yeah. and um I just, I told Josh, I said, hey man, the title of the record, Falling Flowers, it's about, Victoria and I were looking for a place to get uh, married in Mexico, and we went to this mansion outside this gate, waiting for someone to let us in, and the, some flowers started falling from the tree. So that's what happened. Oh, yeah. And I said, hey, let's make it some kind of psychedelic uh, action adventure situation. Yeah. And we came up with this really nice movie. That's so. awesome. You got a question from Silent Mark, Mark Adams. What's up, buddy? The Bender, uh, dude, uh, The Bender was a, a pleasant surprise, I think, in that it was really, really fun. The weather was amazing. That time of year in Las Vegas, April, it was just like, it couldn't have been better. And um, that old hotel that they do it at, I forget which one it is, but um, it's up on the old, in old Vegas, up on that old strip. And I really liked that old CD vibe. Like, I thought that was cool. It was nice to not be on the strip. You're like an outtake of casino or something. Totally. And, um, you know, they have some nice food up there, too. Like, you can get some local food. I went to, I had some uh, Venezuelan food, which was, like, delicious. And I just enjoyed it. I think everybody had fun there. You know, of course, it was a good party, like it always is yeah. in this scene. Let's hear another track, shall we? Oh, yeah. Here's the uh, opener, Jump Change. And I'll tell you who's on so, this record. How about, can I tell you? Oh that? yeah, but uh, my question, question first was: This is okay. Yeah, this was my question. This is your. I, I, I know you're featuring. 
you featured your wife on vocals on that one, but I was wondering if it was more of like, if it's your actually Eric Deutsch record. Or Absolutely, yeah. The, the rest of the record is instrumental. Okay. That's the only vocal track. I guess. My last band record, I had a few vocal tracks. Yeah. Uh, this one, I had John Gray and Shooter Jennings on it. This record features uh, Tony Mason on drums, Jesse Murphy on bass, uh, Avi Bortnick on guitar, Brian Dry on saxophone or on, on trombone, and Mike McGinnis on saxophone. Yeah. And then Scott Metzger and Andy Thorne were guests on, yeah. on a couple of songs. Andy Thorne, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, Good old I'm from, Andy. I'm from, yeah, I'm, from, I'm familiar with um, Avi. I've, I've heard his playing Yeah, Avi is from John Schofield's Uber, yeah, Uber Jam for about 20 I, years. I yeah. know his stuff from, obviously, Metzger. Jesse Murphy also was the original bass player in Him, Schofield. Yeah, yeah, he's Schofield's bass player for okay. Uber Jam. Also, See, I should have. he's the founder of the band The Brazilian Girls, okay. which is a popular band and right. in some circles was very popular right. for a minute. Uh, Jesse was great. Yeah. Played with Natalie Merchant, Regina Carter, you know, a lot, lot, Joe Jackson, a lot of people. Tony Mason, the drummer, is, was the, my, my trio member on Charlie Hunter's band. Yeah. Now, where did you record it? This record, we actually did at Trout Studios, like the Charlie Hunter record, however, it's moved from Gowanus to Prospect Heights. So it's a different room, but same engineer, same board, you know, great, great, uh, great spot. And then I did other recording at Jeff Hill's studio downstairs here in my building. There's a studio now? There was, it's gone now, but for 10 years wow. we had that going. So. Yeah, awesome, just pop downstairs. I made a lot of records down there, including my record Demonio Teclado, Victoria's record, Chariot was mostly recorded down there. I did some sampling uh, of your catalog in anticipation of coming oh, out. Oh, thank there. you. Uh, but I, I listened, most of the stuff I heard was the solo stuff. Solo piano? Yeah, I only had a minute, so I didn't hear I heard a couple of the full band things. Yeah, I, this is my sixth record as, as an Eric Deutsch record. Yeah. That solo piano record was the fifth one. Okay. And the rest are band records. Okay. Um, I just I just stumbled on the wrong one. Well, or the right one. I don't know. It, just the yeah. fact that you're stumbling onto any of them is great. Well, I had so for people watching too. Uh, normally when I do this, uh, we get together and we we really quickly do an instrumental thing, make something up, record it's going to come out eventually, a record or something. Uh, we didn't have time today, but one thing I thought of today, I was checking some out, so it's like, oh, maybe there's one of your things that we could do, but like rework. Like, so it's like you already know there's so we do, we could skip the process of like oh yeah making something up we could just do a quit you know what I mean mm -hmm. just come in and like but then I didn't have the I didn't I didn't not have the time to like <laughs> yeah because I get analysis paralysis where I was listening through some of those tracks and I was like oh this one would be cool this one would be cool this one would be and then I was like I actually don't have three hours to sit here and come up with a different way to do this song right 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 it, you know and get out the door and all yeah this. yeah and I mean you skateboarded here you should yeah. tell you should tell the fans out there this guy is an animal. Skateboarding through Brooklyn, yeah. he literally skateboarded from New Jersey with the help of a bus and a train. Yeah, it's actually easier than walking though, for me. I was thinking about getting one of these scooters. I see a lot of adults with these like kind of rolling scooters these days. I think that might be like in the future for me. I highly endorse the. Um, well, see, the thing is with the bike situation, is it's. Oh, I love this. I love this town. It's a really. It's an old whirly. Sounds really cool. Right? The, the distorted. I bought a whirly at one point because I like that sound so much. And I was that. not. I was not playing with keyboard players that owned the gear. Uh -huh. And I wanted the sound so bad that I'd be like, Here. play this. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, play this. Here, here's a keyboard. Yeah. Here is a distortion pedal. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, anyways, yeah, the bike thing. <laughs> Riding, Tell me about the bike. Thing. Riding on the sidewalk is frowned upon, obviously. Yeah. Both. Legally. I do it sometimes. It's, you have to. It's too dangerous I, on the streets. But it's easier to get away with that on the skateboard because you can go much slower. Can you? Take, it's like you can go almost a walking pace if you need to. I just can't skateboard. Yeah. I, I couldn't I mean, either. I could when I was a kid. You learned. I recently? could not either. So this story, not everyone started, but some people have. It was uh, when I was in eighth grade. I had a hundred bucks, and <laughs> I saved up a hundred dollars, and I was like. That's kind of impressive, actually. I was like, well, because I wanted either a guitar or a skateboard. You know, it's right. one of those, like, which, am I right. going to be the skater kid or am I going to be the... Right, right, right. I already which, played which in school bands, so I was like, I'll get the guitar. Yeah. Because, like, I've already do the music. I don't even know how to skateboard. Right, right. I just, you know, so... What kind of guitar did you get? Music career now, you know... What, what, what did you get? Uh, uh, some 
the only, the cheapest acoustic guitar you could afford at the store. It was an LA brand. Oh yeah, LA. Acoustic guitar. But dude, you could have been a pro skater. No. <laughs> I could, I could not have been a pro skater. Yeah, no, you, you chose the right path. I could not have been a pro right skater. Uh, I'm not fearless enough. I'm not willing to sacrifice my body. My yeah. brother, my brother... Um, Your brother is? No, he's not a pro skater, but he was good at it. He bought a skateboard. And uh -huh. he, he was actually good at it because he wasn't scared to hurt himself. Oh, yeah. He was also more of a natural athlete than I am. Yeah. You got you to gotta be fearless for, for, to really yeah. tear it up, to yeah. really shred. Yeah. You know what I do is I ride city bikes in the I've city. We have those uh, in, in Jersey Some, City. Sometimes Heights. I ride them nine times a day. Yeah. Like I ride them to all my piano lessons. Yeah. And it's really convenient. That's, can, that's actually a great thing. It's the, convenient because the parking, yeah. like the thing about the bike is like the locking it up and it getting, yeah. getting stolen and carrying it up the flight of stairs. And since you don't have to do that, you know, the city yeah. bike makes it pretty convenient. That's also why I like the skateboards. You just take it on and off the subway. But so that was, so I bought the guitar, music career. 20 years later, I was like, finally got the skateboard. Like 35 years old, I bought my first skateboard. Nice. I was like, oh, no. I, you know, I learned to ride. I took the thing out the store and I was like, got on it right in yeah. New York City traffic and the bike lane was like, oh. <laughs> just like, just started where'd, where'd going. You, where'd you buy it? Uncle Funky's in the village. Nice, dude. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. You are adventurous. Yeah. So the lane would take differently. But I bought a long board that's like drop dead, like yeah, still. the safest possible still, board. Nobody buys skateboards in the mid 30s. That's great. Uh, so it's great. I highly recommend it. You take it on the subway, get off, you're going. Sidewalk, people don't really get too pissed as long as you're not like out of control. Yeah, like uh, flying by the machine. Yeah. So I'm digging this thing. So who's your, who's your mix engineer? Jeff Hill. Right, okay. Yeah, so Jeff has been, you know what, he's been the bass player in my band for like 10 years. Okay. And, uh, but he, he's out with Chris Robinson now, and he's, they're so Front busy. Running house or playing bass? Playing bass, yeah. Okay. They're so busy with Chris Robinson that he, that he didn't, wasn't really around for like the process of this album. Right. So Jesse Murphy, right. amazing bass player, was basically joined the band, but uh, Jeff, it was really nice to have him mix the record because he's been a part of my last yeah. few records. It's a it's big good, part. Do you know Jeff, the bassist? Yeah. Amazing bassist. Yeah. We did Rufus Wainwright for a lot, many, many years, and we were in Shooter Jennings' band together. And Jeff's just done everything. He's just one of those guys that can play great jazz, great yeah. rock. And he lived downstairs on the second floor. He had the studio, so that's where we made all the stuff. He produced Victoria's first record. Yeah. We've just done a million things together. Awesome. And this uh, Chris Robinson band is really good. Yeah. Have you oh, seen I've it? seen them, yeah. yeah. They played Hangtown last year. I mean, I've seen them. They opened for us Red Rocks. I've seen them. Yeah, so Jeff joined last year, I think, a year ago or so, but Tony Leone, the drummer, he was also in Shooter's band, yeah. so that's kind of our yeah. Shooter Jennings band, and, and then Neil Casale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil has played with us before. And actually, we do this song, Dandelion Wine, that we do bluegrass style. It was, it was written by Neil Casale. <laughs> Is that from Hazy Malaise, their know. band? It's old, it's old tune, I think. Because they have Neil and Jeff, and they had a band called Hazy Malaise, and yeah. kind of a thing. I've never even heard the original. It's funny because it's not, Railroad has some of their early songs were like that, but the fast bluegrass stuff was mm -hmm. like the song Cold Water is a Tom Waits song. Oh, cool. And it's a slow, it's Tom Waits. But we do it like, you know, like, yeah. like burning. Nice. Uh, yeah. If anyone's got any questions, feel free. Or just chill with some tunes. Just chill, man. Hey, man, we got a good, we got a good run out of this thing here. Is this, uh, is this Avi? Yeah. Yeah. I said Metzger sounds. I can tell when it's him. It doesn't sound like no. Metzger. No. Yeah, yeah. Metzger actually plays the slide on the Fall of Flowers track. Yeah, he actually plays only slide on this one. A little bit more slide. Solo. Have you ever worked at um, Reed's place? Reed Black, Vinegar Hill? Yes. Uh, no, I haven't, but I know about it because of the big yes and a small no record was mixed there. And, yeah. So I've been a hung with Reed, but yeah, I've never been over there. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, it's a cool job. Reed's doing some mixes there. Oh, cool. Yeah. What's going on with your stuff? What do you got going? Always 
I'm always doing stuff. I have like... Always irons in the fire. Yeah, well, we're, I mean, I have a couple singles that, well, actually, I have yet to... One is already mixed. Uh, I have another one that's really close to being done being mixed. Uh, I did an EP with Tom Hamilton like four years ago. Oh, cool. Uh, I mean, he produced an EP of mine. Okay. I put out a single a year ago. Actually, he, yeah, remixed my single I put out a year ago. And so I'm, I'm always working on new tunes, but like now I have two and I have more written, so I'm like not sure if I want to put out a full EP again or if I just want to do more singles. So, uh, what's, what's your single? What's that like that you put out last year? Uh, it's two in the middle, uh -huh. vocal team. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, but it's got David Butler who's playing drums oh, on nice. it. Uh, Andy Gessling, whatever that's kind of acoustic. Cool. So, let's see. We got some questions. What age did we start playing music? Six years old, they said they took me for piano lessons. That's awesome. Yeah, they just took me. That's great. I didn't have that. It was I had I was like the opposite. It was like the Rudy complex. I joined band. Yeah. They're like, sure, I mean I guess we'll rent you a trombone and <laughs> <laughs> they weren't they weren't against it like yeah, no offense like, to my parents if they're listening but it was yeah. like but it wasn't it was like no you're playing sports like you have to play sports but not like right. it was never like we'll take you for a piano lesson it was like you know we I kind of taught had, myself everything and we then, had a piano in the house and I think yeah. I was messing around and my grandfather was a musician and my dad played so yeah I had great teachers at school though you know uh -huh. uh, school band school band program amazing and I taught myself everything else but then when I got to college I had a lot of catching up to do sure because I got into a program that was like saw me up so I, I barely skated in and then I shedded my ass off and, you know. nice dude <clears throat> let's see yeah this song is called Ghost Feather guys thanks for uh, for yeah, I'm glad cute. you're enjoying it that's actually the life's work that's that's always an interesting question no one, no one thinks about. At what point did you see that you can make it your life's work? It actually might be clearer to me than to some other musicians. When I, when I hit, um, when I got into college at Boulder, mm -hmm. I, I just had, I had a serendipitous situation. I went to visit Boulder because I knew a kid that was uh, a year older than me that was a freshman there. And I went to visit my senior year in high school in 1995, February 95. And I thought I wasn't gonna do music, because right. my grandfather was a professional musician, but he was also a full-time lawyer, okay. and president of musicians' union in DC for 35 right. years. So like he was, he did a lot of things, and it was my father's kind of belief that you could be a musician, but you you just probably need to do something else yeah. too. So um, I went to Boulder, and that weekend that I visited, I just called the jazz piano teacher and just to say hi. Uh -huh. Thought maybe I'd get a minor or something. Yeah. And I went to meet him, and we hung out and we jammed. And he asked me to do an impromptu audition with the uh -huh. classical faculty, and said he'd give me a jazz scholarship if I did it. So awesome. if, if I passed that, and I didn't have to do very much, I just had to like bare bones get by yeah. the audition. Yeah. And so we hooked up with a small scholarship, but it was enough to be like, wow, I'm gonna go to Boulder and yeah. do jazz piano, and and then they were gonna give you a scholarship to major. Yeah, you were like, oh, I might minor, and they were like, no major. Yeah, they're like, you you'll be the you get the jazz scholarship. The only yeah, one they give yeah. out it was just a small amount, but yeah. it was like enough to be like, wow, somebody wants me, you know? Yeah, college wants me. Yeah, and um, and so when I showed up right away, I got excited about the idea of like practicing instead of like studying. Yeah, <laughs> which is not really how it works, but that's how I kind of thought yeah. about. Oh yeah, I can just go practice piano eight hours a day, and I'll be like that's what doing happens. my job, you know? Honestly, yeah. And um. And then the other lucky thing was I started that band, Fat Mama, yeah. right away, yeah. first month of school. <laughs> so that was like right by the band starting and becoming successful right away, and having that path that I was in the music program, it all right away I was like, oh, I'm a musician. Yeah. But it could have gone a lot of different ways. It's awesome. I didn't apply. I hardly applied to any music school. So yeah. I didn't think yeah. that was the way to go. That's cool. I mean, my thing was a little different. It was like, it was just. Right, like when you're young, you just look at the world so much more simply. Like in eighth grade, you know, like people are always asking you when you're young, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? What do you, you know, I was like, I was in school, but I was eighth grade. I was in school band a few years at that point. I'm like, music was just like, it was just awesome. It just like, you know, and I was like riding to school one day, you know, listening to Pearl Jam, you know. As one did, I did that ten, too. And I was like, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. Why not? Like... <laughs> You're a fucking idiot if you do. Why, why wouldn't you? This is like right. fun. Like it just seemed like so. 
Because, like, yeah, if you're just into fun, you know, like, yeah. of course, but, oh, money, and, like, I, you don't think about it. You're just like, yeah. You're not thinking about that as an eighth grader. I was like, I'm just going to do this for a living. Yeah. I just, I just yeah. decided. I was just like, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, the money thing, you don't really, when you first become a professional musician, I don't think you really sweat the money thing. You just kind of do it and, like, just scrape it by however you can, right? Yeah. It's when you get older that you're like, ah, oh, the money. Yeah, but people always warn you about that when you're young. Too. Yeah, like, sure. oh no, you're gonna need money. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, 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 but shit, I mean, like, people really? do it. I mean, yeah. Look at all these guys. I mean, yeah, whatever. Totally. Someone makes money. Someone can do it. Yeah. Why not? I mean, I'll make money at it. Why not? I'll just, I'll just right. do it. I don't know. It was like that. That's not to say it wasn't, and it wasn't easy for me because I wasn't. My school experience was the opposite. I skated in, you know, but it was like I was way behind because I didn't um, have it. Like I didn't have lessons. And things. And uh, so I had to really like, I took seven years of lessons in four years. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're, you know, you take one set of lessons. Right. I was taking two sets of lessons. Wow. I was taking classical and jazz. Yes, I actually time. was doing that too. Yeah. And, and, it, and I actually was taking a third lesson a week with my private teacher, Art Landy, who That's was awesome. my main yeah. mentor, yeah. educator. So I, I had a, my jazz lesson at school with Greg Dyes, my classical with Bob Spielman and then Landy. So I was taking three lessons a week and I loved it. Yeah. I, I did too. It. I mean, it was like, I just, because, I you know, it. when I got there, I wasn't that good. Like, no one wanted to play with me. And I was like, <laughs> well, this isn't, this isn't going to go well. If, you know what I know? Was, no <laughs> one you, wants to play you, with me. You so really it, wanted it, man. You, well, you, yeah, I was, I got the Rudy complex. Yeah. You know, like, put me in, coach. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And I would just, I said yes to every single gig. And uh -huh. then, you know, everyone gave me the, the shit gigs. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take the shit gigs. Uh -huh. and you, you get better. And, yeah. And I practiced a lot. And so by the end, and you're probably then prepared, people want to play with you. for your gigs and things like yeah, that. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? That was the other thing. Is, that's a big That's a big thing. That's how I ended up in Real Road Earth, really, was like, you know, they sent like 30 songs for the audition, which doesn't mean you learn them all. No. You know, it's like pick some. But I was like, I'm going to learn. I learned every single one. I memorized every single song. And the live versions, too. Like, uh huh. You know, <laughs> so, and they were blown away. Yeah, it was like I was like I'm ready to go right now. Like, right. I, we could do a show tomorrow. Like, right. You know, and the first run we did. That's great. We man. did three nights, not not repeating a single song. Right and, you, and you nailed it. Yeah, I learned 62 songs for the first show. You know, just two. <laughs> but that's how you do it. But, that, that's how yeah. you seal the deal. Sometimes I mean, there's, you do there's that. still players that are obviously there's players out there way better than me. But you learn you always know I mean? for everybody. Yeah, yeah. There's always yeah. somebody better. But you, if you really want to do it, you just make it happen. Well, and that's a great thing about living in New York is that there's not only is there always someone out there better than you, but there's like in this city right now, there's like might be like a, hundreds of people that are better than you, you know? And yeah, like, that's I, a, I love that motivation because yeah, it helps feeling. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's kinda, probably someone better than me in this building. Yeah, but could be, <laughs> yeah, Melvin Gibson's in this building. That guy's a legend on the base. Like, you I'm know, going home. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like that kind of keeps you in check. Like, yeah. In terms of just being like, wow, like it's nice to be a big fish in a small pond, but it's also it, it's it's good for your ego to be oh, no, to, to be just a fish. Because I because I come from a small town, but it's like yeah, and Boulder was a little if, like that. If for you me get too. any good at anything, it's, it's just really easy to get lazy and be like, oh yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Keep everyone calls you first for the bar gig, and you it's easy to go like I'm yeah. the shit. No, <laughs> right. no, 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 you're not. <laughs> no, you're, you're not. Nope. So that's, that's why I, I like being here too. I'm sure it's like, there's plenty to not like about big cities because life, but. Yeah, New York, that, like, New York is getting, stressful and annoying in, in and ways, expensive. but it's also, yeah, but it's also just. Getting great. kicked in the balls, you like kind of need it. You know? Oh yeah, I love getting kicked in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> Stand up right now. <laughs> Somebody kicked me in the balls on Facebook Kick Live. Kick my ass. <laughs> Kick it. Cool, man. Yeah, I think we, uh, we've had a good session here. This Probably has been great. Another five minutes or something, and we can awesome. wrap it up. It's just, just, there's uh, John Kimmock. Hey, John. Hey, buddy. Are you still here? we got to do one of these, but Justin Mazer did the last one. Oh, the Maze Man. I, the actually, one. I saw a little of that. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I love the Maze, dude. Mazer. Mazer. We got, we got an all-star cast. Mazinski. Yeah, we did... Um, we did a great uh, a great gig down there in uh, Pennsylvania at the River Street Jazz Cafe, is that what it's called? Yep. And uh, it was uh, Justin's annual Led Zeppelin holiday extravaganza. Dude, Maze, you gotta have me do one of those. Yeah, Maze, don't hold out on our boy here. Yeah, um, probably busy or something. We, yeah, we had David Butler and Karina yeah. Reichman, yeah. and um, we had a good time. And 
this cat that Maze has singing, the rubber plant, this guy's amazing. I forget his name, but God, he's amazing. Yeah. His buddy from growing up. Wow. Legendary That's rubber plant impersonator. I was in a band that, you know, one of my early band days, we you know, had a cover band. We did Zeppelin stuff. But we had a girl sing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, there's no dudes that can sing. So. Yeah, this guy can really do it, man. Uh, I will spread the Zepp wealth. Yeah, yeah, you got it, man. You got it. We had one question that I think we missed a little bit, but I didn't see the. I didn't see the first part. Mark Femling. I saw that. Yeah. I didn't see the first part. It just says, or do you notice the difference between the regional scenes? Yeah, I, so, don't, I don't see that either. Sorry, Mark. I don't. I'm not trying to ignore your question, but I, I don't. Um, what are you talking about? I didn't about, see bro? the first part. I didn't see the first part. <laughs> I guess John maybe he's already maybe he's already rolled. You still there? Spread the zip. Kimok, the we got to do one of these, and especially the music making portion. What's happening here? Is this a new track or the end of? The yeah, these are all new tracks. Yeah. I'm just kind of running the record yeah, down. Yeah. Why not? It's great. And this isn't even out yet, so exclusive. Guys, exclusive, exclusive. Hashtag listen. <laughs> exclusive. Um, you know, I, I like I wanted to mention something to the folks out there and yeah. to you is that I do have this radio show every Thursday night. That, oh, cool. Um, it's called the Sounds of Brooklyn and Beyond, and it airs on the University of Guadalajara radio. In Mexico, Radio Universidad de Guadalajara, and uh, yeah, obviously people can listen online. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I want to play some of your music on there, so I want you to send me that single. Oh yeah, can I put the link in there for that? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Isn't that a good idea? Yeah, yeah. What That's is amazing. the link? Let me look. It's um, people can check it out at the Mix Cloud. Let me type it in, guys. I got it. Oh, okay. you got? Are you on? I know what here. I'll okay. Well, I was just gonna say. Uh, Earth radio show. Yeah. Every Thursday. Let's see here. Last question. Um, any new and up and coming bands you're enjoying? For me? Um, that's a good oh. question. I'll, honestly, I get kind of. This is a tricky question because, as far as recordings go, I, I don't I don't get to hear a lot of um, artists that are new and up and coming. Let's say, I see them more on the road, I guess. And even then, by the time I run into them, the way the way touring is nowadays, like. There's so many bands you think that are up and coming that have actually, it's they've been on the road for five, 10 years. Right. You know, like, uh, I really like Papadozio, what they do, but it's hard to call them up and coming anymore. You know, they're not. <laughs> uh, little Smokies. Oh, the Little um, Smokies are good. Those yeah, guys are really good. good. I don't, uh, they, I mean, they've been, I, think, I mean, they're up and coming, but I, I, don't, I, I hate to say people are up and coming because I don't want to insult someone that's been on the road. Like, hey, we've been doing this for, <laughs> for years, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Just say that those yeah, are, they're like, man, what do you mean, new van? Yeah, there. but you know, like been on the road like, for ten years. Well, they're they're getting they're blowing up, so yeah. that you know yeah. that, that counts as up and coming. They're good. Um, um and then with Papa Dozio, that's in our scene, but that's who I see. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not like out on the jazz scene these days, so I don't see the up and coming jazz artists. You know. Yeah, like like with Victoria, like she she's into a lot of cool pop music, indie music, and like. This band Wise Blood and this band Rye, those are great bands that are kind of newer and bigger. And like Father John Misty is not exactly yeah. up and coming. He's a Rye. I had, I had his record. He's a good. He's a good. Yeah. He's a good artist. It's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, Kurt Vile is a really yeah. good artist. It's kind of gotten bigger and bigger. Um, who else? I don't know. There's. I mean. You know, Jenny Lewis seems to be getting kind of really big. She's been around a long she's time. She's been a while. I know, but she's like seems to be kind of getting finally. more attention. You know, finally getting more. 
Yeah, nice. I mean, it's the same like Wolfpack. I mean, yeah. they're starting to get more attention. I've, I've, I've been listening to them since their second or third record. When was that? When did they start? Uh, it's not been a long time. I mean, it's probably been five, six years. So I, mean, I guess they're been coming in that sense. Yeah. I mean, but, they're, they're rapid, they're rapid yeah. rise. But I, like I mean, they sold out Red Rocks, didn't they? Is that, did they sell out the Red Rocks? I'm not sure if it sold out or not. I wouldn't be surprised. I think they did. Yeah. I, mean, I know they did. The crazy, they thing, the crazy thing about Red Rocks, and it wasn't like this when I was in college there, it's different now, is that anything that happens there seems to be a, almost a sellout. Yeah. You know? like, it really moved tickets because it's a, it's a tourist Everybody attraction. Everybody moves there. It's a too. tourist attraction, too. Yeah. Like, people come in town, they don't care what's there. It could be like I feel the, like 50% of the American population between 18 and 24 moves there, you know? From every, you know, it's like... We can't. You know, it's like you play in New Jersey. It's like no one shows up because it's all the kids left. <laughs> they all move. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, no offense to our Jersey fans, but it's true. All yeah, the, you know, Colorado is having a moment. You know, it's just it's always been a nice place. It, you know, if, if there was if there was negatives when I moved there in '95, it said it was like a very conservative state. You know, minus Boulder. Um, Denver didn't wasn't it like a warm, welcoming city exactly. And. Right. What's happened since then is that Denver became a warm, welcoming city. Yeah. The whole state got a lot more modern and, yeah. and you know, I don't know if it was like liberal, but just more yeah. modern. And I can't imagine it was like, yeah, 20 years it ago. Was, it was a lot more cowboy, cowboy place, you know? And um, all of a sudden, there's good food everywhere. There, you know, every town you stop at in the mountains becomes like a nice little yeah. town, you know, instead of just some kind of like... I think something you pass through is a lot of nice towns. Yeah. So it's just grown, and then you know the weed made it rich. The state's rich now. Take notes, New Jersey. <laughs> Ganja. <laughs> no, like, uh, come on, like my property taxes, like, give me a break. Can we just get some weed? Get get not weed. only can I not get any weed, I'm paying out the ass for my Yeah, taxes. right? <laughs> can we just, two birds, one stone? Yeah, you know, let's, let's just, up the ante here. Can we just do this? Anyways, I know you got something to get to. I do, yeah. It's been Dude. fun, man. Great. Thanks for coming over, we'll man. Make, we'll do a tune next time. That'd yeah. be great. I appreciate it. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for hanging with us, y'all. We'll see you later.